Hi, this is Tori Wilson. And this is Lillian Garcia. And Candace Michelle. We are TLC. And you're you are listening, listening to In Your Head Online.com. Ho! Hey, hey, hey! All right, and we're back. Welcome to In Your Head Wrestling Radio on the internet icon, Jackie Jones, along with my right hand man, One Inch Biceps, the power goat. Ah, how about that, Jack? Oh, man, I didn't think you'd buy with these guests on the line. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> We are joined by Tori Wilson, Lillian Garcia, and Candace Michelle, TLC, from the Tough Enough After Show and AfterBuzzTV.com. It's on every week, Monday night after uh, 11.15 p.m. Eastern. I think that's 8.15 uh, on the West Coast. I was on there last week, and now they're on In Your Head this week. How, how are you guys doing? Oh, awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Excellent. Now, I just want to know, you know... Um, yeah, we had tough enough uh, the second week now. No, they're meeting like a lot of the the big stars. Uh, not only the the host of the show, but this week Cena was on. What kind of like etiquette is there uh, when you're meeting like a wrestlers for the first time? I think it depends on which wrestler you meet. If you meet me, which I'm Tori, um, I'm not going to expect you to come kiss my butt. But there are wrestlers that you know expect their butt to be kissed, rightly so. You know, you're supposed to walk up to them and shake their hand no matter whether you met them 20 minutes ago outside the building or not. You're supposed to go shake everyone's hand. Yeah, I think it's, you know, to sum that up, it's just about respect. You yeah. know, anytime you meet anybody, you should, especially as somebody that's achieved what you want to achieve in the field, just respect them. No, uh, when you guys, uh, when the three of you first went to WWE, like, uh, how were you treated? Uh, I was. It was great for me. I mean, I, I stepped out of. Um, <clears throat> wow. Well, I actually came in as the first one that was outside of the wrestling arena. So I mean, you know, there were some people that were a little bit like, "What is she doing here?" <laughs> because I wasn't, you know, from the wrestling world. But uh, overall, it was amazing. And like I said before, um, I always give credit to Howard Finkel and also uh, Tony Chimel for training me, and they just received me really great. Mm-hmm. No, well, yeah. when you, yeah, go on, sir. Oh, I was just going to say, for me, uh, the men loved me and the women hated me. But what uh, the hell is new? <laughs> I didn't hate you, Candace. No, no, no me I mean, either. I remember I got bitched at, literally, for sitting on the floor, looking in a mirror, doing my makeup that I took the, and I quote, best spot in the room to do my makeup. Who uh, yelled at you for that? Oh, that was Lita. Amy. Oh. Ouch. Yeah, I was like, oh, sorry, I'll totally sit on the chair with the bulbs going around the window and do my makeup if, if that's where you want me to sit, but I thought I sat on the floor. But, you know, that's what it is. You got to pave your way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about uh, Tori? How were you treated? You know, you're coming from WCW. Well, it was, uh, I don't think we all had, you know, a big welcoming party by WWE because so many people were hired from WCW and we had that whole invasion angle. But for the most part, you know, everyone was cool. There's obviously there was some tension with people that probably worried about their jobs or whatnot. But at least I had—I was just glad I had Stacy with me to walk around with and not feel <laughs> intimidated by everyone. Right. But, uh, even for the people that uh, don't win this year, because only one winner. But how important is the TV time on Tough Enough? You know, if you would go on to to work for WWE. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, immediately you've got notoriety going in, so. I mean, that's already paving the way. You're already coming in with such an advantage to others. Uh, to an advantage and then not to an advantage. I mean, because, you know, some of the wrestlers, uh, I'm sure the superstars are looking at that and saying, geez, they, they didn't have to pave their way the way that I did, doing independence and all of this. But there's also some that are on the show that are that have done independence for years. So depends. I think if they go in there with a lot of showing respect and, and being humble, then I think they'll, they'll be all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It seems to me that if they got picked to be on Tough Enough out of how many people, that they probably all have a chance of getting a contract at some point. Mm-hmm. And bottom mm-hmm. line is, who, I bet they all get contracts, and I think that's the only thing. I mean, it's exciting for them, but, you know, as a viewer, like, you know, we already know the first girl got kicked off she already has a contract. Like me as a viewer, I'm looking at, like, can you at least wait a couple months until <laughs> or a month until the show is over before mm-hmm. you give a contract? Because it makes the winner look useless. Like, you know, if the person that got last place is already getting a contract. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I think that maybe the difference is they're getting a contract for developmental where the winner will get a contract for WWE. Right. So maybe that's what yeah. they're thinking. Yeah. True. How important is it to to get them on TV right away to get like uh, capitalize the most on the on the TV exposure? Because if they you know get on TV like a year later, uh, some people might have already forgot about you know all the stuff they did on Tough Enough. I don't think it's that big of a deal to be honest with you. I feel like it's probably better for them to go train and be ready for TV rather than just go straight on TV and then fail when you know the ball is thrown in their court. Yeah, at any time, if you come in prepared, you're going to stand out. So it doesn't matter if it's now or a year later. Yeah. Would it be better than if someone who was trained won? Because uh, then they could come up quicker, though, because then they could uh, come right right off a of tough enough right to a WWE. Well, it's also good when they fit into the storyline. You know, when yeah. you know Vince McMahon's hot on you and wants to give you a push. You know, if you come up and you're not doing anything, then I think that's when you really look bad. So, you know, I just want to come in when you're hot. Mm-hmm. And he's hot on you. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> weird. <laughs> well, the last week uh, they made the you know they everyone made fun of the comment about uh, the one saying Alicia Fox versus uh, Molina was uh, their favorite match of all time. But uh, what would you if you were Alicia Fox or Molina? What, what would you like? You think like all these people are making fun of uh, the fact that this person thought that your match was one of the best matches? I don't know that they were making fun of it. At least yeah. that guy was it. It was it was more of when he asked, "Okay, what's another match?" And she right, couldn't she come up with anything yeah. else. That's when it was like. I mean, I, I feel like if that's her favorite match, that's her favorite match. She's allowed to to like the Divas match and and choose that. But uh, but if she can't name any other match, then I think that's where the ridicule came in. Yeah, but in her court, she said, "You know, I I just started wrestling. Like I don't know anything about it. Mm. You know, so I mean, you can't blame the girl." You know, and I think Steve was just trying to touch on, like, hey, how much do you know about wrestling? Instead of saying, really, boring down, like, I don't know, but I'm passionate and I want to learn and I want to fight. You know, she was just kind of, like, trying to cover it up, and he called her on her bullshit. <laughs> right. Yeah, but 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 I will say, though, in the in the days, I mean, we have YouTube, and you can look at so many matches. At least you mm-hmm. can do some research going in. Yeah, but I mean, I could well, research it if you don't I know them. Yeah, that's true too. I remember when I was in the contest for the Diva Search, and I was researching all my friends, when my girlfriends worked there, and I was like, who's the champ? And da da da. By the time you get on stage and you do something, you forget everybody's name. Like, mm-hmm. if you don't really know them, you just right. don't know them. Yeah. That's true. You could have just lied and said it was uh, something with Steve Austin, since he's right there in front yeah. of you. Yeah, that would have been a good idea. I, you know what? Come to think of it, I have to. I have to agree with Candace because when I came in, I mean, I watched wrestling as a kid, but then I didn't watch for many, many years going, you know, high school and, and college and all. So when I got called to do it, I didn't even know who Stone Cold was. I will admit that. So I, uh, I can see where she's coming from mm-hmm. where, right. but yeah, don't know uh, it. Well, I hope she knows who Stone Cold is. <laughs> well, now, yeah, with the show, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That would have made for a good segment if she just looked at him and said, "Who are you?" Yeah, oh God, ouch! No, you better know. You better know who's running the show. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, since you brought that up, like you came from, uh, you know, you hadn't watched wrestling for a long time. I don't know if Candace ever watched wrestling. Like once you got in it, like how quickly did you like really get like respect for it and like a passion for the business? You're asking me. No, uh, any of you. Oh. Well, for, for me, it's Candace. Uh, I actually did watch it growing up. I watched it with mm-hmm. my stepdad growing up for many years. I had a Hulk Hogan doll um, instead of a Barbie doll and the whole nine yards. But same as Lillian, you know, high school came and, um, you know, I moved to L.A. and you get out of it and you forget who's there. And now I forgot the question. I have total mommy. How long did it take you to? <laughs> oh, sorry about that. That's all right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, coming in, I had, like I said, I had no respect. I got yelled at for sitting on the floor and doing my makeup. Um, so it was just about earning it, you know, going to the ring hours early and trying to get anybody to help me. And that's when you gr- the respect was earned. And even from the fans, it's that, oh, you know, you're getting better in the ring, you're making improvements, it's just earned. And But that's when it's the most rewarding, especially in this business. Mm-hmm. Well, I think well, it probably took, like, three years before... Like, being in the, in WCW, I really had no clue how much I should be appreciating the chance that I had. And when I started wrestling, actually, in WWE is when I really started appreciating what all those guys go through. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about yeah, Lillian, like, since you weren't, you know, an active wrestler? 
Yeah, like I said, I mean, it was a little rough at the beginning. I definitely had to earn my spot. And it was also rough because I didn't know that I was ring announcing until the day that I showed up. <laughs> the day I showed up backstage, which was terrifying. But, uh, you know, I, I went home and I really did my homework and I was learning everybody's weights and towns and all of that. And I would have done that beforehand had I known that I was ring announcing. But like I said, I, I didn't even know. I thought I was doing backstage interviews or, to be honest with you, it was very vague. Yeah. So, um, you know, by the time I got back and I knew everybody's names and their weights and towns and, and all of that, I, I started earning respect. Mm-hmm. But I oh. think I think Lillian and Tori will agree is you're always earning respect. Always. Yeah. Always. I mean, if you go one, two weeks and you're not trying or you're not showing effort or, you know, I mean, you instantly lose that respect. Right. And, you know, so it, it kind of really creates a, a good standard for morals and values mm-hmm. and keeps you on your toes over there. For sure. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, John, did you have an answer? Did you have a question? Yeah, I got a question for Lillian from the message board. Tommy D wants to know, how did you enjoy your feud with Howard Finkel? No, oh. <laughs> that was fun, actually. <laughs> it was fun because it was the first time that I actually was my one and only match, by the way. I am one and oh. <laughs> I love to that one. Oh, <laughs> Seriously, evening gown match. <laughs> Trish was in my corner. Stacy was in Howard's corner because at the time she was a heel, but then she turned on Howard also, and then all three of us were at the end, like, holding us. Uh-huh. It was great. <laughs> but uh, but it was cool. I mean, I actually, I remember doing my run-in at uh, one of the pay-per-views. <laughs> I actually got to the ball. <laughs> um, uh, Howard Finkel, it was hilarious. And he was such a sport, so it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Was there ever pressure on you to do more matches or anything like that? For me, no, not really, because, uh, you know, my, my role was, you know, singing and singing uh, at WWE, and there has to be somebody doing some kind of role. Not, not everybody can be a wrestler, and then there's, mm-hmm. you know, no diversity. So for me, it was better to just do certain spots and be put, like, it, it made it more interesting, where all of a sudden I was involved in a storyline. It was mm-hmm. kind of like out of the blue and just made it special. Yeah. Now, how about uh, Tori, because you... She had, was not a wrestler for a long time. Then around that that era, like all the all the women in WCW started to re- to uh, wrestle. Would, did they like uh, pressure you to do that, or was it something you wanted to do? Oh yeah, they pressured us. They made us go down to the power plant in Atlanta with uh, Paul Orndorff and uh, Medusa came down there to drop me on my head a few times. And it was uh, it was when you're you have no idea what the heck you're doing to begin with and don't want to wrestle. And they had all of these girls in there that they had just hired. And it was uh, it was really off putting for the for the longest time. I didn't want to get in the ring at all because of that experience. Mm-hmm. And I, I Candace, did you know right away when you went there, you were going there to become a wrestler? No, actually, you know, I thought it was I mean, I loved the idea of wrestling because I was very athletic and mm-hmm. you know of course I wanted to be an actor so I thought wow it's the best of both worlds but going there I, I had didn't have the what I called the passion for wrestling and it wasn't until I think maybe a year or so after I was there that I really started to fall in love with it and was willing to put my body out there and and put the extra time and actually make my life about it mm-hmm. you know and it's it's, you know when people are passionate about it and when they're not. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's a freaking awful job to have if you're not passionate about it because you work your butt off. And, I, I mean, you know, they're in there day in and day out and, you know, on the road and, you know, the whole nine yards. And you have to really love it. And I think all of us can really say, like, we really loved being there. Mm-hmm. You said, uh, you know, earlier that some of the the other women hated you when when you came in. Uh, is it hard to, like, uh, be friends with, with the other women wrestlers because – you know, at the same time, you're trying to divide for the same spot? I think it's hard because, you know, we're all family because you're with each other so much. But some people have different morals and values, and they'll walk all over you to get that spot. And mm-hmm. others don't, you know. Like, I'm sitting here with TLC, and, you know, it's a freaking awesome friendship that we've created and a bond, and we're here to have a show and, you know, and have just have that true love, you know. And there's another part where, you know, you just hang out with people because, that's what you gotta do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the standouts of the show is uh, Steve Austin as a host. Um, is that really how Steve Austin acts, like uh, behind the scenes, pretty much like the character? Yeah, <laughs> no, he's a badass yeah. for sure, <laughs> and he can be so funny. I mean, hilarious. But uh, yeah, he's he's a lot of fun, especially him beer. Oh, my God, remember when he just had me like drink beers oh, in the ring? Good. I would wear like. 
most of it. <laughs> I do remember there was one time when he actually, I think I had 14 beers. Oh and he kept handing me and I kept up <laughs> and, and I got to the back. And of course, I tried to wear most of it so I wouldn't get drunk. But I remember getting to the back and I was so tipsy. I was like, let's party. <laughs> I never had that chance. But... You know, there's always a future. So, Stone Cold, if you're listening, this is Candace, and I want that opportunity sometime. Yeah, we want you, we want you here. Right. <laughs> Did it ever ruin any any of your wardrobes? Oh gosh, uh, yeah, not really wardrobe because I can wash off, but some boots. Uh-huh. You know what? For him, it's worth it. It's absolutely <laughs> yeah. worth yeah. it. Right. No, uh, you, we talked about some of the uh, people that were trained that came into uh, into the show. There's been a lot of uh, indie stars that that didn't make make the show, and they've said like uh, they might just quit wrestling because they didn't get on tough enough. What would what would you say to those people? Do you think they should just uh, quit, or if they really w- want to do it, there's you know other ways to get into WWE besides tough enough? My motto for sure is if you have the passion and you have the drive, you never quit. No matter right. what, you will always find a way to get in. If you're if you're good enough, if you work hard enough, and if those people are already discouraged and quitting because one door closed, then that means that they're not passionate about it. Yeah, if you don't go for your dreams, someone else will. Do you, well, do you think? Do you think it's a, a plus or minus to be a like a, like being an indie wrestler on the show? Because at uh, one point you'd be more advanced than them, but I would think that they would expect more from you because you are a trained wrestler. Yeah, I think if I went on the show and I was trained, I wouldn't tell anybody. You know, so. I wouldn't say that I would that I had like you know like said uh, last eleven week. years experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Eleven years experience when you can't back it up. Yeah, you know, one thing is if you say you're you've got eleven years experience and you can back it up, but otherwise, no. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and I think it's obvious when you get on there, you can run the ropes and do all that stuff already. They're going to know you have some experience. And if you have it, you know, awesome. You know, I'd wish I had all that experience going into WWE. And if not, then bust your ass and learn it. Mm-hmm. There's been a, a lot of uh, funny um, nicknames on the show. Do any of you have any uh, nicknames that maybe the fans don't know about? <laughs> That's that. That will be have to be revealed in uh, in a, a later version. Yes, oh, all right. we well, all have names, but I think on after buzz we'll we'll announce yeah. those. <laughs> all right. Well, any nicknames you uh you you uh you call anybody besides the ones that you've been called? Um. Well, name some people, and I mean I can't. Yeah. I call uh Lil. I mean. Lisa, Victoria, Candace, and I used to travel together, and we call each other Sis. Yeah, yeah, Sis. Well, and Victoria is known as the Queen. Yeah, she's just yeah. Queen B. Mm-hmm. Well, thank yeah. you, guys. Mm-hmm. Andrew, did you have a last question? Yeah, I had another one for Lillian. Matt, he wants to know: Did you ever get back at Charlie Haas for when he knocked you off the apron? Oh, poor Charlie. Oh. No, you know I. He was, uh, he felt so bad, like genuinely felt so bad. But, you know, think good things came out of it. It got turned into a storyline. It's still torn, by the way, but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, nah, he's he's that awesome, and we're still friends, so he's, it's all good. Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of advice would you uh, give to the to the winner or people that are, that are picked up by WWE? How different is it going to be once they're in WWE from being on Tough Enough? I would just say don't get the big head. From it for sure. I yeah. mean, be humble about it, and just be ready to work and be ready to respect everybody that's already been there, busting their butt for years. And uh, yeah, just I mean, I the biggest thing is just be humble about it. Yeah, I agree with Lillian. You know, just be filled with gratitude. And you know, Vince always says they give you a platform for you to make yourself a star. So you know, give it everything you got. And like always, you have to respect those people that paved the way because they're the ones that are going to help you make it or break it there bottom line that kind of goes for everyone in wwe i feel like they most people are humble even if you've been there a long time you just you never walk around with a big head for Mm -hmm. the most part and if you do you're out yeah or you get ribbed like a mofo yeah (laughs) you don't want to be in that spot (laughs) we've seen that happen How do you uh, both be humble and at the same time you 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 know you have to be a star and have uh, confidence in yourself? Uh, how can you do both? Well, about... That's all on stage. Mm-hmm. You yeah. go on stage and have that confidence. You have to walk around backstage acting like your poop doesn't stink. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 
I think there's a fine line between confidence and being cocky. And, um, you know, you can smell arrogance a mile away. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you guys, you can listen to Tori Wilson, Lillian Garcia, Candace Michelle every Monday night after Raw. Listen to them talk about Tough Enough on AfterBuzzTV.com. You can also watch them, not just listen. That's uh, Monday nights, 11.15 p.m. Eastern. That's 8.15 on the West Coast. Uh, Thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, we'd love to continue connecting with the fans. So if you don't mind, I, I, um, we want to go ahead and let you know what our Twitter names are. Sure. Mine's at Lillian Garcia. And please remember to uh, just spell the name with one L in the middle. So and that way you can get to If you don't, me. you will get bare but thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and mine's at uh, Corey11. Where did you get the 11 from? I don't know. It's just some weird thing I picked up. There you go. And and mine's at Diva Candace M. Excellent. We'll put that right on the website. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, Zach. And one incher. Thank you. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Bye. Bye. This is Bill DeMott, (laughs) a.k.a. Hugh Morris. You're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. 